Well, hello there. Welcome to Metal Gear Solid. We're going to be checking all the pre-game content. Let's see. Uh, this is the master collection for PC. Uh, but for the gameplay itself, I'm going to be doing a Duck Station version because it looks a lot better, to be honest. Uh, let's see what the what this menu offers. We have a game selection. We can play the Metal Gear Solid. Original release in 98, the voices in, in European. And then you can play the North American and Japanese. Uh, it also has that, but you have to download it. And that's fine. Then we have the special missions. Then we have the VR missions. And we have the integral version, which was released a year later only in Japan. And it has like more settings and stuff that the original game in Japan didn't have. So I think I'm going to be playing this version, Mother Your Solid Normal One. We're going to be playing the 60 Hertz version because it has more frame rate, it's more fluid than the PAL version. And let's see what else is in the game. Uh, you can start the game, you can edit save data. This is like a virtual memory card basically and you can use this to uh modify the psychomantis uh, dialogues it will read your it will read your memory card you guys know the game and depending on what safe steps you have castlevania you can have uh, silent hills we call them it'll, it'll be like oh do you like this game huh? do you like konami games well etc so you can do that uh, we can check the online manual too, which is this front and the back. And zooming to appreciate the art. You are Snake, a government agent on a mission to regain control of a secret nuclear weapon space from terrorist lands. Confidential, lightly armed and facing an army of foes, Snake must avoid far fights in order to survive. Already giving you a hint that it's a stealth game. If Snake, if Snake can locate them, he can utilize advanced hardware ranging from silent pistol to ground to air missiles. Enemies react to sight and sound, so stay quiet and stay in the shadows. State of the art graphics, textures, transparencies, models, and explosions. Top gripping story with multiple endings, a truly cinematic experience. Yep. So there you can see some descriptions from the game, very cool. And most importantly, you can see Meryl. Code number is 14015 because during the game they'll tell you you have to call Merrill, but it will not tell you anywhere what his frequency. So the only way to know the hint to know is the back of the box of the game, which is a digital version in this case. So I'm gonna actually take note for that 14015. So because later on I'm not gonna be on this menu, so I don't want to forget. Gaming notebook next to me. Let's go. So what else is on the on this version? Special missions. Uh, let's read the description. The game is gonna occur. This game was released on '98, but the game takes place on 2005. Shadow Moses incident. In this game, Solid Snake comes out of retirement after living in seclusion in Alaska in order to take on a mission regarding Big Boss Corpse. It tells the tale of the infiltration mission that will later be known as the Shadow Moses Incident. The game features many new ideas, such as the use of the controller vibration function and various secrets hidden within the game's packaging. Nice. Uh, there is a master book explaining the whole Metal Gear saga, not for this game, for the whole franchise. But that contains spoilers, if you try to read it... Oh, spoiler alert. This book reference content from the entire Metal Gear series. We recommend re reading this after you have completed each game to avoid spoiling your experience. So after we complete all... I'm doing, by the way, all the Metal Gear games. We just finished Metal Gear 1 from 1987 on my YouTube channel. And we also completed Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, which uh, is from the 90, 1990. Um, we already completed that. The next one in the series is this one. Um, we also have a screenplay book. Uh, basically, this is 
the game translate into a book. So here you can see uh, they're gonna tell like the dialogues and what happens. It's like a description of what's happening through the game. I don't want to read it because it's kind of spoiler. What else is here? Download North American pack and Japanese pack. So you need these to play the integral version. Options. We have language. And play in those. Screen. So you can align it on the on the right on the left, on the right. That's so cool though. <laughs> or on the center. Because the game is four by three. It's not 16 by nine or anything like that. So the game will play on that box and on the sides will have uh, this stuff. That's very cool. Let's check all the wallpapers. We have wallpaper one, which is like those boxes. We have the two with the circuits, which is very cool too. We have this one. I think this one is my favorite. That's why I had it. We have four, which is also insanely cool with snake and <clears throat> spoilers. Uh, here we have um, more like a logo kind of background. It's very cool. And here we have a snake and the fox sound logo. That is, this one is insanely cool too. Here we have a Metal Gear, which is gray, and back to one. I think I like this one the most. Yeah, so that's it. That's all that is on the content from the menu. Now we're gonna go to the game, and we're gonna, I'm gonna try to like role play a snake, as in like, we're gonna go through all that happened before this game. Uh, we're gonna see the briefings. And we're gonna launch uh, the game. Here we go. Oh, yes. Oh. I want to go to the main menu. And from here is the main menu of the game. We're gonna enjoy the music of the main menu. That's what we're, we're gonna do now. Hmm. Uh, first, we're gonna check the special. Special are gonna tell us previous operations. So we have the story of Metal Gear. The first one I was talking about, and then Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Uh, I don't think this... I'm going to play some music on the background from each game. So, for example, this is Metal Gear 1. To give some atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a lot of tests, so I'm not going to read it out loud, but I'm going to give some time to switch... Pro I'm going to read it uh, on my mind, basically. Epic.
Oh! <laughs> okay, cool. So that is the story of the first game, basically. And now we're gonna go through the story of the second game. Here we go. Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. This one is four years later, Natasha. In the game, they call her Gustava, though. Wait, what? They change the name or something? That's weird. Great Fox is back. Round two. Snake and Fox fought without any weapons. A fist to fist duel involved no hatred or murder intent. That was so big, by the way. This game was very epic. Like, I'm playing this in case you guys want to know what happened before, but you can also watch the the games themselves on the YouTube channel. Oh! Big 
are still alive. Was waiting for a snake. Alaska. Yep, that's where this game is gonna start. Well, those are the previous operations Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Um, back to Metal Gear Solid. I heard Kojima wanted to name this Metal Gear 3 because he made 1 and 2. But not many people knew about the other first two games, so he named it Metal Gear Solid as like a like a new start, basically. Still featuring the main character of the other two games, but more like yeah, it was also a new generation, new console, new everything. So yeah. Uh, now we're gonna check the briefing. This is gonna be video cassette types of uh, cinematics like this. Right, so grab your popcorns. Let's enjoy the movie. been a long time, Snake. I should have known you were behind this, Colonel. That's no way to greet an old war buddy, Snake. What do you want from me? I just invited you here so we could have a talk. Invited? That's what you call sending armed soldiers after me? Sorry if they were a little rough with you. But we've got a serious situation here. Only you can get us out of it. I'm retired from Foxhound. You're not my commander anymore, and I don't have to take orders from you or anyone else. You will take these orders. I know it. Excuse me. Who's this? Dr. Naomi Hunter. She's chief of Foxhound's medical staff and an expert in gene therapy. Are you military? No, civilian. I've been sent here from ATGC. Pleasure to meet you, Snake. Don't worry, this injection won't hurt a bit. What's the shot for? What's wrong? You don't like shots? Snake, listen up. It all went down five hours ago. Heavily armed soldiers occupied Shadow Moses Island, a remote island off the coast of Alaska. What soldiers? Next generation special forces, led by members of Unit Foxhound. They've presented Washington with a single demand, and they say that if it isn't met, they'll launch a nuclear weapon. A nuclear weapon? I'm afraid so. You see, the island is the site of a secret nuclear weapons disposal facility. Foxhound hijacking a nuclear weapon? Now you understand how serious the situation is. You'll have two mission objectives. First, you're to rescue the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, and the president of ArmsTech, Kenneth Baker. They're both being held as hostages. Those are some heavy-duty hostages. Secondly, you're to investigate whether or not the terrorists have the ability to launch a nuclear strike, and stop them if they do. Any questions, Snake? Questions? I haven't even said whether I'd accept this mission. Well, you can make up your mind after you hear more about the situation. Oh, shit. Alright, so that was the mission, the mission description that we used here, too. Now we're gonna uh, listen to the rest. Uh, this is the first Metal Gear with the voice lines. You can already see how good it is, right? Uh, operation outline infiltration method tell me about the nuclear weapon disposal facility the disposal facility includes a hardened underground base even with our most advanced intelligence gathering equipment we can't tell what's happening inside so someone needs to penetrate gather intelligence and report back sounds like a spy movie what's the insertion method well, an air insertion is impossible. Not with this storm going on. We'll approach the disposal facility by sub. Approach? Yes, within a few miles of it. 
The facility is equipped with sonar detection capabilities. They'd be able to hear our engine or propeller noise. And then? We'll launch a one-man SDV. Launch? Same as a torpedo, only this has no propulsion device of its own. After the SDV gets as close as it can, dispose of it. From there on, you'll have to swim. You want me to swim in Sub-Zero Alaskan water? Don't worry. That suit represents the latest advances in polythermal technology. The nuclear weapons disposal facility covers the whole island. I'll instruct you by codec after you reach your target. Anyone going with me? As usual, this is a one-man infiltration mission. Weapons and equipment OSP? Yes. This is a top-secret black op. Don't expect any official support. <laughs> You're on your own, Snake. <laughs> we lose you. You don't know us. I don't know you. Time limit. What's the time limit? 24 hours. They say they'll launch after 24 hours. Need to hurry. Do they say what the target will be? So far, they haven't mentioned the target. When did the countdown start? Five hours ago. Oh. So that's 19 hours. It will be funny if you take... If your save file takes 19 hours, it's like... Poof, you failed the mission. Operational member. Person in charge of the operation. Colonel, who are you speaking for? Naturally, I'm representing the U.S. government. So who's in supervisory control of this operation? The President of the United States. Which means that the President must be meeting with his top aides in the map room about now, huh? No, at this point they're still video conferencing with each other. If that's a real nuclear warhead, shouldn't they issue a COG? Not yet. The Secretary of Defense has operational control and is fully aware of the situation. After you infiltrate, if you determine they possess nuclear launch capabilities, a COG will be issued. Well, if they haven't been located to the nuclear shelter under Mount Washington, I suppose there isn't that much reason to worry yet. Is the National Security Agency in on this? Yes. So is the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency. The DIA? I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. They'll hmm. be sending us some support. We don't need desk jockeys. We need a nuclear weapons specialist. Of course. A nuclear weapons specialist has already been assigned to us. Okay. This is so cool. Like watching this. A support crew. We need backup from a specialist. I'm just an amateur when it comes to nuclear weapons. I know. That's why I've requested the assistance of a military analyst named Nastasha Romanenko. She'll be providing you backup by codec. A female analyst? She's built up an impressive record as an advisor for the nuclear emergency search team. Contact her if you have any questions. She's also an expert on high-tech weapons. Where's she working from? At her home in Los Angeles. California. Seems like a million miles away. Okay, interesting. Nastasha Romanenko. At uh, Roy Campbell. Let's know more about him. Colonel, you're retired. Why are you involved in this? Because there aren't many people who know Foxhound as well as I do. Is that really the only reason? I've been soldiering for a long time. I don't know anything else. I guess even though I'm getting a little old, I still love to be in the field. Colonel, you're a lousy liar. <laughs> Tell me the real reason. Okay, Snake. Sorry. I'll be frank. A person very dear to me is being held hostage. Who oh. is it? My niece, <gasps> Meryl. Let's know more about Meryl. What was your niece doing here? Several soldiers were reported missing the day of the revolt. And my niece was one of those called in as an emergency replacement. She looks like you. She's my little brother's girl. He died in the Gulf War. And since then, I've been watching after her. A personal motive, Colonel. 
That's not very soldierly. I'm retired. I'm just an old man now. And I'm your friend. Psychotherapy to not be attracted friends. to the opposite sex. I've thought of us as friends since the fall of Zanzibar. With my personality, I don't have too many friends. That's what I trust about you. It's what makes you human. Please, Snake. Save my niece, Meryl. All right. It's a long way. I have two conditions. Name them. One, no more secrets between us. I want complete disclosure at all times. And two, I'll only accept orders directly from you, Colonel. No cutoffs involved, okay? Agreed. That's why I was called. But one thing. What? I'm not a colonel anymore. Just a retired old warhorse. I understand, Colonel. Okay, so Snake accepted the mission right there. Uh, let's talk about Dr. Naomi. That doctor, Naomi Hunt. Is she part of this operation too? She was in charge of Foxhound's gene therapy. She knows more about those men than anyone else. You mean you've seen them naked? Make no mistake, I'm not a nurse. I'm a scientist. By the way, what was that injection for? It's a combination of nanomachines and an anti-freezing peptide so that your blood and other bodily fluids don't freeze, even at sub-arctic temperatures. Nanomachines? Not just one kind, either. There are different types which will replenish the supply of adrenaline, nutrition, and sugar in your bloodstream. Uh, now I nanomachines, son. Food. I also put some nootropics in there. Say what? Nootropics. A class of drugs which will help improve your mental functioning. It'll make me smarter, huh? Anything else? Yes. Benzedrine. It's a type of stimulant. It'll keep you alert and responsive for 12 straight hours. That was quite a cocktail. <laughs> Anything else in there? Those nanomachines will also keep your codex batteries charged up. Well, I guess I can call you when I'm ready to go on a diet. You're welcome. <laughs> that was amazing. That's so cool. Ah, detail information. Here we go. Hostages. It was DARPA and who was the other one? The chief of DARPA and the president of an arms manufacturing company. What business did they have at a nuclear weapons disposal facility? The truth is that secret exercises were being conducted at the time the terrorist group attacked. Must be extremely important exercises if those two were directly involved. Were they testing some kind of new advanced weapon? I'm not privy to that information. Do we know exactly where they're being held? The DARPA chief has also been injected with the mini transmitter. As you get closer, you should be able to pick up his location on your radar. Oh, okay. Nuclear weapons. Do they really have the ability to launch a nuclear missile? They say they do. They even gave us the serial number of the warhead they plan to use. Was the number confirmed? I'm afraid so. At the very least, they've got their hands on a real nuclear warhead. Isn't there some kind of safety device to prevent this type of terrorism? Yes. Every missile and warhead in our arsenal is equipped with a PAL, which uses a discrete detonation code. PAL? Permissive Action Link. The safety control system built into all nuclear weapons systems. But even so, we can't rest easy. Why not? Because the DARPA chief knows the detonation code. Oh, but even if they have a nuclear warhead, it must have been removed from its missile. All the missiles on these disposal sites are supposed to be dismantled. It's not that easy to get your hands on an ICBM. That used to be true. But since the end of the Cold War, you can get anything if you have enough money and the right connections. True that. Black market. Silk, Silk Road. <laughs> the terrorist armament. How well armed are these terrorists? I know there was an exercise going on at the time they revolted. They're heavily armed, I'm afraid. What about their battle experience? The six members of Foxhound in charge are all hardened veterans. Oh, shit. They're tough enough to eat nails and ask for seconds. I wouldn't expect anything less from Foxhound. The others are next generation special forces. 
They're not your average grunts either. Hmm. Are they gonna... Yeah, I think we're gonna go through each uh, folk sound member. The terrorist uh, demand. Terrorist demand. So what exactly are they demanding? A person's remains. Remains? That's right. To be more accurate, cell specimens which contain the individual's genomic information. Cell specimens? Why would they want that? The terrorists need them. You see, these next generation special forces have been strengthened through gene therapy. Strengthened? You've heard of the Human Genome Project. They've been mapping the human genome, and they're nearly finished. Following up on this research, the military has been working towards identifying those genes which are responsible for making effective soldiers. There are genes that do that? Yes. And using gene therapy, they're able to transplant those genes into regular soldiers. Gene therapy? I'll explain this part. With gene therapy, we can remove those genes which we know may lead to sickness or disease, and at the same time, splice in genes with beneficial effects, such as resistance to cancer, for example. In other words, we can overcome all sorts of genetic diseases, and at the same time, add genetic characteristics as desired. Okay. And so if you knew what genes were responsible for making the perfect soldier, you could implant them in the same way, right? Yes, we could. But it all depends on being able to isolate and identify those soldier genes. And in order to do that, it's helpful if you can study the genomic information of one of the greatest soldiers ever. <laughs> you guys know who that is. It's really cool how Kojima takes concepts from like different real world stuff like nuclear weapons, um, gene therapy or the human genome project and twist it in a way to put a log in a video game with uh, some realistic aspects and then some fictional aspects too. Um, and I also I really admire and appreciate all these context for the game. It adds so much to the experience. It makes it so much richer. Like, if you play the game without listening to this stuff, you're gonna be a little more, more lost. But if you, if you, uh, uh, here to all this information, do you, uh, do you know a lot better what's happening? A uh, genetic strengthening. One of the greatest soldiers ever. The man they call the greatest warrior of the 20th century. You don't mean Big Boss. That's right. We've been working feverishly to identify the genes responsible for his incredible combat skill. So far, we've discovered about 60 of the so-called soldier genes. Oh. So his body was recovered after all. Yes. And his cells have remained frozen in a cryo chamber. His genomic information is a priceless treasure to mankind. Priceless to the military, perhaps. His body was burned severely, but it was possible to restore his DNA profile from just a single strand of his hair. You people are amazing. And then you're going to transplant those genes into soldiers? Yes. We'll use a process that I discovered called gene targeting. The strongest soldiers don't become what they are by acquiring their skills through training or experience. We now know that hereditary factors are far more crucial for creating superior soldiers. Snake, we can't give them his body. It's potentially more dangerous than all the nuclear warheads on that island put together. I hear the terrorists are calling themselves the Sons of Big Boss. The sons of Big Boss. I mean, they have their genes, I guess. Interesting. I mean, Snake is like... Isn't Snake like a clone of Big Boss? I'm not sure if at this point that's already a reveal. Probably they didn't think about that in the first mental, in the first two Metal Gears. But yeah. Uh, next Generation Special Force Unit. Tell me about these next generation special forces. They started out. Wait, 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 wait. Before I go there. When they mentioned Big Buzz's body was burned, that was the end of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, the game we just played before this one. At the, final, at the end of the game, you had to fight Big Boss and you burn him. That's why they say that. Yeah. Next generation special force unit. Tell me about these next generation special forces. 
They started out as an anti-terrorist special ops unit, made up of former members of biochem units, technical escort units, and a nuclear emergency search team. Their purpose was to respond to threats involving next-generation weapons of mass destruction, including NBC weapons. Until they were added, that is. Who's they? These guys didn't start out as regular army. Looks like a pretty international group. Mercenaries? Yeah, and it gets worse. Most of them were from a Merc agency that I think you're familiar with. Mm? They were part of Big Boss's private guard. And after Big Boss went down, the military just bought out all their contracts. Outer heaven. After that, they were merged with our own VR unit, Force 21, and retrained. If you ask me, these so-called next generation special forces should be called simulated soldiers. They have no real battle experience. Video mm. game players, huh? Oh! Don't forget they've all been strengthened with gene therapy. Roasted. They carry genes which make them excellent soldiers. Don't get careless just because they don't have much experience. I thought using genetically modified soldiers was prohibited by international law. Yes, but those are just declarations, not actual treaties. The interesting thing is that nearly every member of the unit conspired in this attack. Mm. It really, Kojima really makes you think if this could be a thing in the future. Like... Like, modif uh, genetically modified soldiers, I don't know. It's like a, a brave new world, I guess. The reason for Anonymous approval. How could an entire unit be subverted to rebellion? They're calling it a revolution. Since they all went through the same gene therapy, they probably felt closer than brothers. They see the unit as their only family. The sons of Big Boss. But if they were regular army, they must have been interviewed periodically by army counselors. According to their files, they all got straight A's on their psychological tests. They all seemed like fine, upstanding, patriotic soldiers. But they all took part in the uprising? No. Several people didn't show up on the day of the exercise. That's why there was a resupply of troops. Was there any sign recently that something might be wrong? There was a report a month ago that they were acting strangely. Apparently they consulted classified information about the soldier genes and performed their own gene therapy experiments. They can do that even without you? Well, our gene therapy process is almost completely automated. And besides that, they're all geniuses with IQs over 180. Holy. Even the existence of this genome army is a national secret of the highest order. We've been hoping to investigate this thing quietly and deal with it behind closed doors. Mm. Some questions come to mind, though. So... If all the soldiers there, the song, sons of Big Boss, have the have been gen therapy, do you have to do the gen therapy before they are born, like the the sperm or the female cell, or do you have, to, or you can do that like when you're grown up? Because otherwise, that means this whole operation should have been planned before all the soldiers there were born, like 20, 30, 40 years ago, right? Or if if not, how do you change the genome? Of an aggrown adult. That's a plot hole, I think. Right? Otherwise, it makes no sense. This whole thing was planned decades ago, and now they all united here and they do the, re the revolt, the revolutions thing, right? I don't know. Uh, you need Fox Sound. This is gonna be very interesting. High Tech Special Forces Unit Fox Hound. Your former unit, and one that I was a commander of. An elite group combining firepower and expertise. They're every bit as good as when I was commanding them. So they're still around. There are six members of Foxhound involved in this terrorist activity. Psycho Mattis, with his powerful psychic abilities. Sniper Wolf, a beautiful and deadly sharpshooter. Decoy Octopus. Master of Disguise, Vulcan Raven, Giant and Shaman, and Revolver Ocelot, specialist in interrogation and a formidable gunfighter. 
Looks like a lovely bunch of folks. Who's the last one? Too bad we'll be meeting under these circumstances. And finally, in charge of them, Foxhound squad leader, Liquid Snake. Oh! Liquid Snake? Yes. And you're the only person who can stand against him. Shish! <laughs> Liquid Snake? Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake. The man with the same code name as you. Tell me what you know. He fought in the Gulf War as a teenager, the youngest person in the SAS. His job was to track down and destroy mobile Scud missile launching platforms. You were there too, I believe. Didn't you infiltrate Western Iraq with a platoon of Green Berets? I was just a kid myself back then. The details are classified, but it seems that originally he penetrated the Middle East as a sleeper for the SIS. He was a spy for the British Secret Intelligence Service? But he never once showed his face in Century House. He was taken prisoner in Iraq, and after that there was no trace of him for several years. After you retired, he was rescued and became a member of Foxhound. I thought that by the time I left, they were no longer using code names. I don't know his real name. That information is so highly classified that even I can't look at it. Here's a photo of him. <gasps> Pretty shocking, huh? His skin tone is different, but otherwise you two are exact duplicates. Oh, she... I have a twin? I don't know the details, but it seems so. That's why we really need you for this mission. You're the only one who can beat him. Now that I've met you, I know. You've got something that he doesn't. I can see it in your eyes. Why don't I find that thought more comforting? <laughs> okay. We went through everything, all the briefing files. Uh, oh. Wait, what? I need to borrow your scissors. What, is what this? are you going to do? Don't worry, just gonna clean myself up a little. Oh, huh? could I gather her, her hair? I don't want to be mistaken for the leader of the terrorists. True. Wait, that was 2357. Am I missing something? Ah, that was a briefing. Uh, well. I'm gonna end the video now. I hope you guys enjoyed all that. That was like a prequel for the game, I guess. And uh, I will see you again uh, playing the actual game. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.